Hi guys, welcome back. Most people think non-leading ledgers are required only when a company has multiple countries or they have a relation with parent and subsidiary structures. It's not always true. It is one of the reason, but it is not always true. So even if only one, let's say one company, they have only operation in one country. Let's, for example, let's take uh, operation in India. Still in some situations, we need also non-leading ledgers along with our leading ledgers. So there are different business requirements we have. So I'm going to list few business requirements where operation only in India, whereas the non-leading ledger is required along with your leading ledger. And here also we are going to justify that this is your parallel ledger and parallel accounting. Uh, accounting standard 116 is related to your operating lease. Before this Indian accounting standard 116, like normally the normal process is or we are going to follow the standard accounting principle. So in that case, you will find that the rent expenses, whatever we are going to book. So it will be always your PNL. That means we are going to record the transaction as rent expenses is going to debit and bank is going to credit or it will be payable if it is outstanding. So in this case, there is no asset, no liability, recognitions will be there. So there is nothing there will be in the balance sheet. That is your normal situation. And you are going to show ex uh, all the rent expenses as part of your p &L. This is the normal process. But after Indian Accounting Standard 116, which is introduced or which is effective from 1st April 2019, as per the, uh, like you can say, uh, converge with your IFRS 16. Now, as per that, all the accounting, sorry, all the lease, which is more than 12 months now must be capitalized as per the accounting standard 116. Now, in this case, the right of use asset concept will be there. So that means lease liability will be there at the time of point of valuation. Now, in p and instead of rent, depreciation on the right of use of asset we are going to take. So interest expense on the lease liability we are going to take. So as a result, now we are going to have higher asset and the liability proportionate liability will be there in your balance sheet. In profit and loss, we are going to show depreciation plus interest instead of rent experience, uh, rent expense if you are going to follow this concept. Now again, for to manage both the things, we have to follow the non-leading ledger or we are going to introduce here non-leading ledger. So if we'll summarize, in this case, there is no other country operation we have. We have only operation in India, but simultaneously we are going to follow the Indian accounting standard Plus, we are also going to follow the Companies Act. So even if the company is only operating in India, still in this case, there is a need of two ledgers. One will be your primary ledger, that is leading ledger, along with that, the non-leading ledgers. Because we have to manage our invest investors or consolidation point of view, Indian accounting standard we are going to follow. Simultaneously, we are also going to follow the Companies Act point of view. So we are going to follow one ledger that is for Indian accounting standard and if exactly if I will take the example of 116 accounting standard where we are going to follow the rules which is or the guidelines which is available as per the Indian accounting standard so that we are going to link with our leading ledger because we are going to standardize this accounting standard as per our IFRS so this is the in this case we are going to use leading ledger and whereas Companies Act point of view, local gap point of view, which is your Schedule 3 statutory filing point of view or management re reporting point of view, we are going to use non-leading ledger. So still we, because management accounting point of view or normal operation point of view, still we are going to consider our rent as your expenditure, which is p and item. Whereas as per the accounting standard point of view, I already explained, it should be your balance sheet. So in this case, we will take leading ledger with accounting standard 16 and the non-leading ledger, which is as per the local gap or as per the traditional approach. Both views are existing in the same system, means same company code. So we can take the reports, whether it is GL balance or FIGL L03. So all the data, we are going to take it from the AC doc. So when we will take the leading ledger data, that means it is related to our accounting standard 116. When it is related to non-leading ledger, let's say N1, that is related to our local gap. Another example could be when we have to follow certain tax regulations, tax regulatory reporting required requirements we have. So we are going to follow Indian income tax and as per the guidelines for the Indian income tax, we are going to evaluate our asset and we are going to calculate our depreciation rules. So which is different from your Indian accounting standard? means we are going to follow certain rules or we are going to evaluate our asset and depreciation calculation as per Indian accounting standard. Simultaneously, we are also going to follow income tax. So instead of only handling the asset accounting only for one 
requirement we are going for multiple depreciation area so one depreciation area we can link let's say depreciation area is 0 1 that we may follow here the indian accounting standard or let's say ifrs or let's say local gap that is as per the uh, your uh, income tax point of view or as per the local gap and another in depreciation area we may introduce here for the tax valuation point of view this is a very common because always you will find the depreciation need to be evaluated as per the two different rules one is for income tax point of view and another one for your tax point of view so in this case we can assign the leading ledger as per indian accounting standard financials and the non-leading ledger as per your tax reporting so one depreciation area we can assign to leading ledger another one can be non-leading ledger if exactly i'm going to show you in the system for reference i will take your company code z400 here some other ledgers are there just ignore we will take here leading ledger and non-leading ledger so leading ledger is as per the local gap where we are going to follow the indian accounting standard and the non-leading ledger we are going to follow the tax valuation point of view to justify this one or to meet this requirement i have created here two depreciation area one is depreciation area 0 1 another one is your depreciation area 10. so as per the depreciation area 10 1 you can see what is the value of asset and as per the depreciation area 10 what is the value of asset you can see slightly the value of asset is more when we are going for depreciation area 10. okay so here it is 1 lakh 5840 and uh, when i will go to 10 it is 1 lakh 7500 not only the valuation difference is there you can also see the depreciation values so if you'll go to the posted values you will check here uh, this is my fifth period depreciation already posted that is last month uh, you take the sixth period depreciation which is related to sep september so what is the plan depreciation here it is showing as per the depreciation area 01 which is assigned with our local gap or i mean look indian accounting standard so here the depreciation value is 869.92 because here we are going to follow certain depreciation key as per the the, the multi-level method whatever i have configured simultaneously if i will go for other depreciation area like depreciation area 10 which is linked with my tax valuation point of view you can see asset value is 88356 check again it is 88869.92 here it is 8863.56 so both asset valuation as well as depreciation is different so this is this could be another example where we in the same country and this is only operation in one country only still we need here the leading ledger as well as non-leading ledger to justify the parallel ledgers or parallel accounting next example is internal management and for the bank convent point of view now in this case management want that we are going to follow ifrs because the reporting will be better and we have a compatibility with our global peers whereas the lenders the banks they might ask that we want the statements as per the standard accounting principle or a specific accounting principle so management requirement is different and your bank requirement is different so in this case maybe we can introduce the non-leading ledger or the non-leading ledger is going to help to maintain a separate books of account for your management view point of view without disrupting our statutory books of accounts coming to the next one that is related to merger it is also very helpful in case of merger and acquisition now now let's say a company is planning for fdi or there is a possibility of acquisitions are there from one multinational company in that case they are following the ifrs reporting that multinational company following ifrs reporting so in that way they want their reports so as we are already following the leading ledger for our indian accounting standard point of view so we can continue that one so we will keep indian accounting standard with our leading ledger and simultaneously we can start preparing the ifrs view as there is a possibility of merger with our non-leading ledger let's say l1 so when there is a requirement of parallel books of accounts we need to present which is already available with our non-reading ledger so in this case also non-reading ledgers can be applicable so I, here i have given a couple of examples where companies only operating in one country and i have taken example here india still there is need of non-reading ledgers required so it's not always 100 percent true that when company have multiple country operation they need non-reading ledger any questions any query please add in the comments